Ladies and gentlemen, Gigabyte have possibly done an oopsie and have commented in public that a new generation of Ryzen processors will launch later this year. So does this mean Zen 5 is going to launch much earlier than expected? Will these be APUs or is it something entirely different? Well, let's take a look at the comment because I think many people are probably wondering what the hell, not least of whom will be AMD, wondering why AMD are being basically blasted in public by one of their partners. Even though these new products are entry level servers, CPU support does not end here and the AM5 platform is to be supported until at least 2025. The next generation of AMD Ryzen desktop process will come out later this year and will also be supported on this AM5 platform. So existing customers who purchase these servers today have the opportunity to upgrade to the Ryzen 7000 series successor, which I would assume to be Ryzen 8000 or what have you. So the question is, what actually could this be? I mean, the most obvious thing is Zen 5, but the most obvious thing in this case is also the most unprobable because Zen 5 almost certainly will not launch this year unless AMD really steps up its production cycle. <laughs> it's at the moment anyway scheduled for next year. In fact, this is even being shown on AMD's own roadmap. So I'm very skeptical it will be Zen 5. So let's just take that you know, and put it in the catapult and launch it as far away as possible. I don't think that's going to happen. So this leaves us with a couple of other options. The first would be some type of Zen Plus, if you will, or Zen 4 Plus or a Zen 4 Refresh, whatever you want to say. This is honestly something I'm, again, rather skeptical of. I've heard absolutely nothing about this. And while I'm sure there are definitely bits of information that I don't know about personally, it seems very unlikely that this is going to happen. I am very skeptical. Now, it's also possible that it would be some type of APU. In fact, I actually have some APUs in a moment in the Phoenix lineup that I'll tell you guys about. However, the issue I have with the APU side of things is that, and you can see the roadmap yourself on screen, which does kind of, and this leaked roadmap, you know, it possibly does give us a hint of what's coming. But even then, if you were to look at this, you can say, well, does an APU in a server capacity actually make any great deal of sense? Now, again, these AM5 processors are basically being used again in servers like 1U units. So it's, you know, I suppose it's somewhat possible, but again, not 100%. So I was told about numerous SKUs which will launch later this year. I haven't had time to verify this yet, but I'm putting it in here anyway because quite frankly, I find it kind of interesting and it's possible that one of these uh, Phoenix-based processes is something that possibly could make its way to the desktop in one form or another. However, I was told about the Ryzen 7 7840U, the 7640U, uh, the 7540U, as well as the 7340U. And these are going to launch essentially late Q3. But again, I don't know if Gigabyte are actually referring to these specific products or not. It's a very interesting one. I've reached out to numerous sources at the moment because all of this information has just come up. In fact, uh, I'm gonna level with you guys. Today was not actually supposed to be this video. It was not supposed to be a news video at all. I've actually recorded a whole bunch of stuff for Intel's Battle Mage, and that was, was supposed to, uh, be launched today um, with you know all the specifications. I actually have all of the specs now for Battle Mage, performance targets, a bunch of other stuff. So if you're interested in how Intel will be competing in GPUs, you should def definitely check that out. It should be uh, probably tomorrow. I think that should be up now, depending on other schedules. But yeah, uh, that was supposed to be today, not this. But uh, a number of people reached out to me asking what the hell was going on. And as I said, I've reached out to some people. I'm still not 100% certain. It's very possible Gigabyte themselves have just screwed up. And, you know, something's gone on. There's been a miscommunication somewhere or another. I honestly do not know. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see how AMD responds to this. I'm sure we're going to get clarification one way or another. But let's switch now to AMD's FSR3, which, as I'm sure many of you are aware, FSR3 was announced kind of a while back, around the time of the 7900 series GPUs announcements. And, you know, on the surface, it does look pretty cool. It's essentially a rival of some description to NVIDIA's DLSS3, and AMD are claiming up to two times performance increase versus FSR2. But that, of course, is even higher when you consider native resolution. 
AMD's FSR 3 tech will soon be here and they are looking to double your frame rates over FSR 2. There are a number of things that the company have disclosed and we can get some idea of how it compares to DLSS 3 from Nvidia as there are a couple of very key differences. Now as of the time I'm recording this the PowerPoint presentation has gone live on their website however the video is still stating that it's coming soon. Because of this, I'm putting out a quick video here just to go through some of the finer points, but I will go much deeper when, of course, AMD provides us more information as I could interpret, and you'll get why I said that in a moment, some of the information. However, potentially I could be getting some stuff wrong because, again, we don't have a complete overview of how this works. So the first slide introducing FSR 3 gives us a pretty good idea of what AMD are looking to achieve. The first and perhaps most important thing is that the transition from FSR 2 to 3 is going to be very easy and offer a full and open license. So this is really good for developers. So if a title already uh, exists, which has FSR 2, then it should be really easy to simply just go plonk and of course support FSR 3. Further to this, they are offering up to a two times performance increase versus FSR 2. Of course, this means that if you compare it to native, the speed up will be even greater, depending on your system configuration and what quality settings and resolution that you're using. Further to all of this, they are going to be achieving this with frame interpolation, which is a little bit different to NVIDIA's frame generation. Now, this is where an asterisk appears, and I want to say that still some of this information is a little murky, and hopefully we'll get a better understanding over the coming weeks on exactly how this uh, how this differs and what type of quality and so on that we get because again not all of this information is present yet but of course the technology also hasn't been released to the general public so it's going to be very interesting when they do uh, put this available you know what developers can achieve with it because FSR 2's adoption has been pretty quick so let's just really quickly move to the native rendering to FSR 3 and you can see that there are of course comparisons between native rendering without upscaling with the majority of the work of course being the main rendering workload and then you've got like the post effects stuff like your blurs or whatever taking up very little time then you've got FSR 2 with two times scaling and then finally FSR 3 using a two times upscaling as well as frame interpolation the next couple of slides really give us the insight into how all of this works so introducing FSR 3 with FSR 2 we're already computing more pixels than we have samples in the current frame we could generate even more by introducing interpolated frames achieving up to a two times frame rate boost in the process the good news is that high probability will be at least one sample for every interpolated pixel no feedback loop but the challenges are you can't rely on color clamping to collect outdated samples non-linear motion interpolation is hard with 2d screen space motion and vectors and interpolating final frames means all post pressure post processing excuse me and ui also needs to get interpolated now if we look at the early look slide fsr benefits from synergies between upscaling interpolation so this is where we start to get a much better understanding how all of this works it leverages motion vectors and amd's fluid motion to produce the interpolated frames Good motion estimation is key for interpolation as well as FSR2 itself can be leveraged for additional internal um, for additional internal information. Latency, of course, is a really big deal when you're dealing with generating or interpolating frames, if you will. And so gamers will need both high frame rate and the lowest possible latency. Now, of course, just how in terms of quality amongst other metrics this differs and compares to NVIDIA's DLSS3, we can certainly speculate. However, you know, interpolation just by its very nature is different to NVIDIA's frame generation. Now, I say this of course because frame generation itself certainly has not been perfect there are certainly some situations where dlss3 starts to fall apart and it can also not be perfect with latency again it does depend upon the system itself so it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out with amd i'm going to be very curious also to see how support differs across different gpus and different system configurations as well as different resolutions interpolation has been certainly a bit of an eyebrow raiser for many people um, and again because it's essentially different to nvidia's technology which uses a host of different data 
to use basically the tensor cores of the GPU as well as things like motion uh, vector data and so on to actually physically generate a new frame rather than interpret a new frame. It's going to be very curious to see com quality comparisons on this. With that said, I am super excited still because you know what? The reality is that let's say for sake of discussion, you've got a 7900 XTX. You know, you may not need to worry about this anyway, but it's going to be more beneficial, I suspect, for people with lower to mid-range GPUs who perhaps just need that little bit of extra kick. And yeah, of course, ray tracing as well. So it's going to be an interesting comparison, I suspect, over the next while. Plus as well, adoption rates. The reality is, of course, that DLSS, you know, it could be literally the best thing ever. It could give you a shoulder massage. But if you don't own an NVIDIA graphics card or you own an NVIDIA graphics card, which doesn't work with DLSS, uh, free, such as even NVIDIA's RTX 20 series, for example. Yeah, that's not going to help you at all. So, like, if AMD's product, do, or should I say, solution does allow you to run on, let's say, you know, competitive hardware, um, you know, a range of different GPUs, then obviously, by default, that's going to be awesome for gamers. So there you have it guys, FSR3 is looking very interesting. There's also been a bunch of info that's uh, been updated for uh, Intel's XCSS. When FSR3 finally gets fully detailed, I might do a comparison of some description of all of the different technologies and how they work, especially of course, since we also have like temporal stuff with uh, Unreal Engine as well. So possibly I'll do some type of uh, update because I was putting those videos out, but obviously that information is a little old now because we're talking about FSR2, and uh, FSR1 I think it was, and of course uh, DLSS2. So obviously there's been a lot of movements there. I think upsampling and generally just being more efficient in GPU rendering performance is just obviously the way to go at the moment, especially when you consider that, um, you know, not everyone has access to the highest performance devices. Obviously, consoles are a thing, just, you know, laptops, that type of stuff. I'm going to be super hyped to see what happens in the next couple of years. I think frame generation and fake frames, like it or not, are just going to continue to evolve. Obviously, everyone and their mother at this point are talking about AI. It's, you know, the new thing. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, well, it's YouTube. You know what to do. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.